Hello everyone, so welcome to another Python tutorial series. And in this video, I'm going to talk about uh, collisions in your Sonnet engine. And this is going to be tutorial number 8. And so, collisions are a very important part of any games. And basically, when you have objects and entities, and when they interact with each other, you need a collision detection. And without collision detection, it's going to be very hard to make a game. So let's first import our Yersena module. So we can write from Yersena import star. And from random import rand int, we're going to be using the random module to be generating random numbers um, soon. And so we could write app is equal to Yersena. And here I'm going to create two entities. And I'm first going to create a ball. So ball is equal to entity. The model is going to be equal to a sphere because I want to create a sphere ball. And I'm going to set the scale to 0.5, and what this does is that it sets the x, y, and z um, values to half of its original. And I want to set the position equal to 0, 0, 0, so that's centered. And now that I've created this ball, I'm going to create another entity, and it's going to be a box. So I'm going to name this box 1, and it's going to be equal to entity. The model is going to be equal to a cube. I'm going to set the color equal to color.cyan and set the texture equal to a white cube. I'm going to scale this to uh, 2 on the x, 4 on the y, 2 on the z. And now I'm going to set the position instead of 0, 0, 0. I'm going to set the position as 4, 0, 0. So it's 4 on the uh, x coordinate. And now I can just write app.run. So here you can see that I've created a cube on the right side and a sphere in the center. And what I want to do is that I want the ball to move to the right and collide with the cube. So I'm going to do that right now. And so what we could do is create an update function and just move the ball to the right. So I'm going to close this. And up here, I could write define update. And here I'm going to have a global value, a global variable. dx is going to be equal to 0 0.05. And now in this update function, I'm going to create global dx. dx. And I'm going to change the ball's uh, location. So ball.x is equal to the previous ball.x plus dx. And so what this does is that uh, the ball is going to move to the right by 0 0.05 every single time this update function is called. And now when I run this, the ball is moving to the right. But here you see that when the ball gets to the cube, it just phases through the cube, and there's no collision. So how do we add collision to the ball in the cube? Well, we need to add a collider. And so in our entities, we need to add another parameter, and this is going to be a collider parameter. And the first thing is going to be collider is equal to box. So we're adding a box collider to these. And now for our box, I'm going to add a collider equal to box. And I add that. And now what we could do is we want to, in this update function, check if the ball and the box intersect. So we want to have a variable hit info is equal to ball dot intersects. There you go. And now if hit info dot hit, then dx is equal to negative dx. So now we use the intersects uh, function right here to detect collision. Now this intersects uses an entity's collider to check if it intersects other colliders. Now if there is a collision, that is if this hit info dot hit is true, we want the ball to just bounce back. And now if I run this, oops, there should not be that. If this ball hits this, yeah, okay. So that was a mistake. Uh, now if this ball hits this uh, block, now you see that the ball moves backwards. Great. So now let's add another box. Let's add another box to the left side of the ball so that the ball is able to bounce left and right. 
So what I could do is write box2 is equal to entity, or actually instead of doing entity, there is a, another function we can use, and that's the duplicate function. So duplicate. And what do we want to duplicate? Well, we want to duplicate box1. And now we want to just change the x-coordinate. So I could just write x is equal to negative 4, and this changes the x-coordinate of box2. And so if I run this, You could see the ball bounced off this block. And now, yep, now you saw that the ball bounced off this block. Great. So, let's say we wanted to do more things, such as changing the ball's color every single time it collides with the box. Well, now we can use the random module that we imported up here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to generate a random color. So, I'm going to have a I'm going to generate a random RGB color, so R is going to be randint 0, 255, G is randint 0, 255, B is randint 200, 0 to 255. And now, if the ball hits something and it collides with something, I'm going to change the color of the ball to these values. So, ball.color is equal to color.RGB, RGB. And now if I run this, you see that the ball's color changed every single time that it hits one of these walls. And there you go. You see that it's changing randomly. So now what if we want the ball to act like a wrecking ball? And what this means is that what if we want, whenever the ball hits something, we want whatever it hit to just disappear. So let's say the ball hit the uh, cube or the wall. We want the wall to disappear. So how do we do this? So now what we could do is create a list. And this list is going to store these two box entities. So I call this list boxes. And here I can boxes.append box1 and boxes.append box2. And now what I could just write and this if statement is if hit info dot entity in boxes, then I can use the destroy function. So destroy hit info dot entity. So here we use the destroy function to just do this. So the destroy function will destroy an entity and make it disappear. And now if I run this. When the ball just hits the wall, the wall should disappear. And let's see. This should be boxes. Now if the ball hits the wall, the wall should just disappear. And there you go. So the wall disappeared right there. And the wall disappeared right there. And now you'll see that it doesn't bounce back because there's no wall there. So now with these collisions, it is possible for us to make interactive games in the Yersna engine, and which I'll talk about in my next video. So this is the end of this video. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.